Hi everyone and welcome back to another UE4 tutorial video. In this video we'll be tackling world composition, what it is, how we use it and why do we use it. This was voted for by my patrons and my YouTube members so thank you for your votes. If you want to take part in future votes and decide what videos get made next each month you can join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Ryan Eddy or become a YouTube member as well or instead of rather and uh, you can cast your vote at the start of each month. So this video is all about world composition. So what is world composition? If you've ever played an open world game such as like Skyrim, uh, GTA, Red Dead Redemption, anything like that, the worlds are massive, okay? And have you ever stopped and thought about, well, how do you actually make these worlds? Because if you've ever experienced it, you can only load up a map one per person. So, for example, I've got one map open up here. I can't have another person editing the same map. So you're going to rely on one person to design that whole entire world. Well, no, because that's a lot of work and it's a bit unfair to do so. And it'll probably take you forever to make the game. So typically what we would do is we would divide up the labor and give different people different levels, different environments, different things like that to work, to work together towards to build that world up. And that's where world composition can come in. But it also has other uses as well, such as optimization uses, uh, which we'll go through uh, briefly today as well. Um, there are two things you want to take into account though. Um, that world composition is not uh, separate from level streaming. Level streaming is world composition. It's just world composition is a way to um, utilize landscapes a lot better using uh, level streaming. So it's a way of, uh, it's, it's a different tool to handle the same problem. Okay, so they usually work together. It's not one or the other. Uh, and secondly, you have to be aware of that, the fact that there is limits to the world that you can build. You can't build an infinite world, at least without some trickery. Um, so there are some extents that you will have to abide by, but they're quite large extents. So you shouldn't know by, uh, by no means be hitting them. So how do we actually do world composition? Well, first thing you want to do is head into your world settings, which should be on the right hand side. If it's not, go to Windows and choose world settings and it'll come up. Then you want to search for world composition and you want to make sure enable world composition is ticked on. Okay. Next, um, I've got a level loaded up here and that's my first person example map. I've just removed the whole entire environment and so we're left with a basic void. And in my map, this would be counted as a what we call a persistent level. So to see your level tab, which I've got up here docked in the top left, you can turn that on by going to Window and Levels. And you can see here it says Persistent Level. Now, Persistent Level means that this thing is sort of the header file which loads up all the maps that are linked to it. Okay, And it sort of manages it. But by no means do you have everything or anything inside the persistent level. You may have it empty completely. Like none of this stuff may not actually be in it. But where world competition comes in is that we can make sub levels and sub levels of those levels and sub levels of those levels to build a uh, whole entire worlds up. So how do we actually go about doing this? Well, in the levels window, go to levels drop down and choose create new. Now it will ask you to create a new map, and it's important that it must be in the same map as your persistent level because it searches the same folder that it's in to find what maps it can be part of its world composition. So here I'm going to call this one map1 and click save. Now you'll see map1 appear in the same folder as the content browser and it will also appear in your levels window here as a greyed out name. If it's greyed out it means it's unloaded. So basically it hasn't opened up, you haven't opened up the map to edit it inside the editor. So to load it up just right click and choose load. Now you can see you can do stuff with it, you can hide it, you can lock it, and so on and so forth. So if it's blue, so at the moment persistent level is blue, that means that's the current level that we're editing. And you can see in the bottom left uh, right hand corner of our viewport, it's this level first person example map persistent. So we don't want it to be doing this, we want to be using the map one. So right click on it and choose make make current. Now map one is blue. That means that we're now editing map 1, and you can see that in the bottom right hand corner of your viewport. So in here I'm going to create a landscape. Let's just do a landscape. Just a bog standard one, like so. And I can sculpt it and do whatever I want with it. Okay. Uh, so let's just sculpt something. Da -da 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 -da. 
like so. Okay, so there's my landscape in my first map. So what about making more? Okay, well here's map one, and you can see I can hide map one. It's a sub level of the persistent level. And if I want to see what the world look like, I can look, use the minimap editor to see my world in top down view and manipulate it in that way. So that is this top down button here. It says summon world composition and it looks like a little map with a little arrow on it. Click on here and here's your minimap view. Uh, view. And you can see my landscape here that I've sculpted quickly here. You can see where the player camera currently is. And as you fly about, you can see the, the, uh, the little arrow turn around and move around things like that. So, and this is basically what you're working with most of the time. Now, the red and green lines indicate the world origin. And if I scroll all the way out, you get this yellow line. And that indicates the world uh, extents, the world limits. Okay. So, you can't go beyond this line by default. There is a way around that, but we won't cover that in this video. We'll do another video on that one. So, let's scroll in and have a look. And in this view, you can move things about. So, and as you can see here, I can... As I move it about in here, it moves about inside this world as well. Okay. So you can move things about as freely as you like inside the minimap and it affects it inside the world. So how do we make more of these things? Okay, well, if I go back into my sorry, my minimap editor. And back in my minimap editor here, I can right click on this landscape with it selected and go down to it says add adjacent landscape level. And I can go to the left, to the right, to above or below. So let's go to the right. It'll ask me to make a new file. I'll call this map 2. And there you go. It adds it to the, the world here. And you can see map 2 has now appeared in my levels uh, window. And you can see it's also appeared in the viewport. And you can go on and on and on and add as many as you like. So I can right click on here again, add one below it, map three, hit save, and there you go. I can select map three here, right click, add adjacent map, go to the right, map four, and save. And you get the idea, okay? So, and again, you can move these about freely, swap them around however you like, whatever you want to do, okay? And now you can see I've got a massive world starting to form up inside my world editor. So, uh, look, well actually, first of all, let's sculpt something else on another level so you can see that working. So, to, to sculpt on this landscape here, which is map 4, I believe. I want to right-click, make current. Go back to my modes, and then sculpt away. Okay. If it play, I can see the sculpt there, and I don't think I've put it in the wrong place. Let's move the player out of the way. Or oh, actually, let's flatten this. There we go. So, and then you can see in the distance there, World 4 has been loaded up in the distance. So, let's cover a couple more things. So, inside our world composition we can also child and parent levels together so I can put all these maps here so map 2 and 3 if I drag them onto map 1 I can now click on map 1 move it about and it'll move them all about and if I want to unparent them I just select them again and then drag them onto top of my persistent level to unparent so that's one thing you can do Another thing we can do as well is work on how do we make it so we can do, uh, let's do something like this, hang on. Let's set up our world uh, here. And go into here, sculpt, right. And I'm just going to sculpt this briefly up like so. Like that. So you've sculpted a world, we'll use a height map to generate your world, and you've got like a landscape that isn't flat on the edge, okay. I then go into my map here, and I believe it, I think it's this one. We're on. Yeah, it is that one. And with this one here, we can right-click on here, add adjacent map to above, 
And let's call this one map five. Or oh, adjacent map, we'll call it adjacent map. Hit save, and it'll put it to the side. Now you can see the problem here is that it has got this sort of rough edge, okay? So how do you actually get them to sync up and match their design? Well, if you were to put adjacent map onto this one, which is map one, and make that a child of it, I can then go into my sculpt for my tools, and you can see it treats both landscapes as the same landscape. So I can sculpt, and you can see it merges the two together. Yeah, I'll undo that so you can see that working a bit more. So if I go into the flatten, you can see it work, like I say. So you can join landscapes up together as well that have various height differences, most, most likely due to a height map or tiled height map. Um, another thing we need to learn about is layers. So if go into my minimap view, and let's say, let's put map 4 here into a different layer. So layers up here, you can see uncategorized. So at the moment, all of these are uncategorized. And that means their streaming distance by default is 50,000 units. That means uh, I have to be 50,000 units away from it uh, to be able to see it. So if I was to add another layer here, and let's call it, leave it as my layer, and stream distance here will do at 10,000. So a lot shorter distance, and click create. I'm gonna add map four here to that layer. So you just click assign to layer, my layer. You can do it here or you can do it in here as well. Works the same way. So now map four is part of my layer. I can see that if I go to my layer, map four belongs to that. Another way to organize yourselves is by using layers. But this is where the optimization comes in because now my layer is a stream distance of 10,000. It should, if it lets me play. Oh, I was loaded up in the wrong map. And put my character through the floor. Uh, first person character, where are you? There we are. So if I move my character to be looking towards map four so you can see it working. So map four has this sort of ridge in a distance. Hit play. And you can see I can't see that ridge anymore. I have to move a lot closer to it in order to see it. So I'll keep on going and let's actually let's tweak the speed of my character here so you can actually get there quicker. And Let's change my maximum walk speed to something like 6,000. So that's, that's 60,000, not that. Hit play. And let's go there a lot quicker. And as I get closer, you see it pop into view. There you go. So you can handle a lot of optimization through using level detail and streaming distances to block off parts of the world. And you would hide that pop in through atmospheric fog or hiding behind buildings or other things like that. Now on the topic of buildings as well. Now a lot of people I see using world composition solely use it just for landscape purposes, but you can use it for so much more than that. What about just using it just for levels? So if I go back to my minimap view, by the way, if you want to move something back to a different layer, so if I go to back to my layer, I can right click and assign it back to uncategorized, and my layer is now empty. And if I click save, you can see actually no. save the first person map you can see it will get rid of he says we have to open it up again that's it yeah if you open it up again you can see it gets rid of that layer because nothing's using it so yeah as I was saying it doesn't have to be landscapes only it can also be buildings and things like that so let's load up some maps let's load all these up And let's say, let's work on our, like, so imagine you're doing like a camp or a city or something like that. So in this map over, let's do it, let's do a map four here. So in over here, we're going to have a city. Okay. And in here, we're going to add that city. So I'm going to go and create a new map. So I'm going to go levels, create new, 
and we'll do village. Okay, hit save, and we'll load it up. So right click load, and now I can start working in. in oh, sorry, double click on it. Now I can start adding stuff to my village map. So let's add some buildings. So to speak. Okay, let's add another one. So there's a village, okay, or city, whatever you want to do. And that is now part of a separate map. That's part of this village map. Now I can hide that village, I can work on that village separately, so I can unload all these if I wanted to. And just work on my village if I want and bring it back all back in and you can start seeing how different people can work on different things so that village as well can also be part of that streaming thing so that you saw earlier with map before so I can go to new distance here and go village details and do a stream distance of say 20,000 and click create I'm going to add then village to that layer so now that village is over there but you can't see it because it's been cold out and when I get close enough to it it'll pop into view and load up the whole entire map for my village okay and so you can start seeing how you can then layer that on top even further and then you can introduce level streaming inside of the village the village itself can have level streaming and you can go on and on and on and on and eventually you have loads of different levels all loaded up inside your persistent level and you can start seeing how worlds like things like Skyrim and GTA and Red Dead Redemption get so massive without being too unwieldy to work on now a lot of this does become part of the planning process so if you're working in a little big team you want to assign different maps to different people maybe different areas so like the village for example will be given to person B and uh, person A will be in charge of the actual landscape of that area whatever it may be um, you've got free choice there but it's important to note that uh, you don't have to just have uh, landscapes you can use objects and AI and objects um, and actors of different types as well it doesn't have to be landscapes um, and that's kind of it for world composition um, there is something else you can do in it but we'll save that for another video because I want to do something else with that um, and that's with uh, rebasing but we'll do that for another day for another thing and that's it for this video uh, so world composition is a very useful tool for making very very large worlds um, but more importantly it's useful for working together with different teams and also managing a workflow a lot better it makes it a lot easier to focus on one map at a time or one level at a time rather than working on a massive environment uh, just for one person. And that kind of brings us to the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've learned a bit more about world composition and what you can use it for and why you'd want to use it. If you want to cast your vote onto next videos, become a Patreon or a YouTube member and you get a new vote at the start of every single month. So big thank you to all of my Patrons and YouTube members for their support. None of this would be possible without you guys, so thank you again for your support. If you like what I do and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you leave a comment below for more content you want to see, what videos you'd like to have, or if you have any questions about world composition and level streaming in general, that'd be great to see and answer your questions. So thank you again and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.